hopefully the third time recording this will be a charm. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so I'm Elizabeth. I blog a little bit about Montessori homeschooling and my family's experience with it over at papermontessori.com. And there were some other moms asking in a homeschool group about the different Washika language materials. We have quite a few, many that I have done a DIY version of, and a few that I've purchased as well. So I thought it might be helpful to share what we've done and what some of those differences are between what I was able to do for the DIY version and the actual version that you can purchase. So the first material that I want to talk about is the reading program. So this is the Washika phonics program, and it's something that you would use similarly to how you would use like a pink blue green program or how you might use language objects along those sides. One thing that's nice for homeschool parents is that Washika does have a workbook that they can that they provide now that's something that is new and the workbook's really really easy for parents to work through they also have a parent guide which tells you exactly what to do and how to use them and i think that's one thing that's really really helpful too is sometimes i feel like when we're doing montessori at home we spend a lot of time like refreshing ourselves on the lessons and that can be really, really challenging. So I wanted to go over these. I did not want to spend the money on the drawers that Washika has. Typically, these come in the beautiful colored drawers. So instead, I made these pocket folders. So this red one is my DIY version. I started out with these before they offered the download version. And I have to admit, I am a big fan of the download version because my DIY took me a long time. I basically created my template in PowerPoint, went through, did searches for all of the words, just drug, copied and pasted those images into my PowerPoint, and then printed them on cardstock, laminated them, cut them out. But the most time consuming part, aside from getting the words in to my PowerPoint template was finding the pictures. And that's something that, I want to say it took me at least two hours per color to do these, whereas these are only about $10 per color. And if I'm evaluating my time like that, that's two hours at about $5 an hour. Is it worth it more to me to be spending that time with my kids or to be working or <laughs> doing something else other than doing this particular DIY? So I want to show you what each of the typical drawers for me their folders contain so each one contains a key phonogram that it's focusing on um, for the blue the blue is more difficult than the red so it goes red orange yellow green aqua blue purple pink and gold if i'm not mistaken i believe the phonograms that are addressed in the dryer reading folders are blue purple and gold levels in moshiga so for example, for this blue one, it has three different phonograms. For this red one, it's only one. So what the children can do is they can put the pictures out. You can, they can sort the pictures according to the different phonograms that there are. They can use their movable alphabet to then spell the word. So I have a four-year-old and that's how he's working on these, is he's getting the pictures out, sounding them out, saying them. I find this is, easier to make sure that he's getting practice with everything as opposed to just using my language objects because it's all organized. I know exactly what's where, I know where he's at. Um, and I think my older child as well can see as she makes progress through the different folders and they offer like a tracking page, which is really appealing to the elementary child as well. And I like the Washika for that. I think as far as the interest for a three to six year old child though, I think the language objects actually really, really are attractive to them. So you start out using language objects for like sound games, Montessori, I spy, those kinds of things. And then they start, can start using them with the movable alphabet. So for these pictures, it's very similar. They are able to spell words with the movable alphabet. They can also practice matching the pictures to the words so that they get their basic early reading practice in. 
On the back of these, there are, so the key phonogram is highlighted in blue. It's also available in cursive for them to see, which can be very helpful for kids who are learning to write in cursive and trying to see that difference. They have specified the folder that each one goes in, or sorry, the drawer that each one goes in to make it easier to put away if for some reason they get mixed up. So really my kind of like takeaway final for these is if I had to choose right now which one I would do, if I would do a DIY version, if I would purchase the hard copies, or if I would purchase the downloads, I would say purchase the downloads, um, particularly because you can purchase it as you go instead of having to get everything at one time. And I think there's a lot of value in that because in that way you can evaluate what your children, um, how they take to it, what they're ready for, and it's a little bit more budget friendly to be able to spread it out over time. Another thing that is a component of these that I have not mentioned yet are these booklets. So I did a DIY, DIY version and in the hard copy, it's available in both print and I believe the hard copy like turned over and it's in cursive or something like that. The download version only offers print. Um, the other difference between the download version and the hard copy or the original or what I did for my DIY is that the download version actually has fewer pictures or fewer phonographs like words for each different phonogram. Um, in a homeschool environment, and by fewer, I mean the difference is like the original had like 10 and the download version has eight. So it's not hugely significant. I do think it works really well in a homeschool environment, particularly in my family because I've got a two-year age difference between my oldest two and I will have a five-year age difference between my youngest two. So they're not particularly working on any of these things together. And I think it's really helpful for them in that case to have smaller, more bite-sized chunks so that they don't get tired of the work before they're able to finish it. And of course you can always, you know, remove some to prevent that. But I think in my opinion, from just seeing that and watching my children work with it, the um, download version actually works really, really well for homeschool. And as you can see, there's really functionally no big difference. I didn't put my little booklets in here that I did the DIY version, but there's functionally not really a big difference between the DIY that I was able to do and what Washika actually sells as their download version. I've never seen, I've never seen the hard copy version, but it's very, I believe it's very, very similar to this. So that is the reading program. So following the reading program, there are the Washika readers. And these are the parts of the biome readers, the continent readers. So I actually purchased the parts of the bio readers used. They did not come with like the little box that I think Wishika usually sells them in. So I made basically a filing cabinet with these little paper files or cardstock. Um, did these as a DIY. The files themselves. And so what we have for these is you have a book they follow the same levels as you have in the Washika reading program. So if a kid is able to do the red drawers, then they're going to be able to read the red books is the idea behind it. Typically in Montessori, I feel like it really helps to let children discover their ability to read on their own. So I think working in the reading program before introducing these books, is, these readers is very helpful for them. So they start with a booklet. It kind of goes through maybe a story information, <laughs> something along with that. Um, then as far as what the cards have is you have some cards with sight words and any words that are above the particular color level. So for red, with it being the beginning, it's CBC words. Plant is longer than a CBC word. So it's included in here for kids to practice before they get to the book. Once they read the book, they then are able to take these pictures and they're able to put them in order from the book. 
The pictures have a control on the back so that the kids can see if they got the order right. Then they, after they get the order down, then they're able to take, this is the same text as what you have in the reader. And they're able to take these and match these to the pictures. And again, you have the control number on the back so that they can check that. So this is the purchased version. And I actually, before I purchased these, I did a DIY version. And my DIY version ended up being fairly similar. So I just searched for images online so that I could, you know, kind of do my own version of it. And I end up having an image that corresponds to each of these. When I made my reader, I used cardstock and laminated that for the cover. If I had to do it again, I would do just cardstock for the cover. I also use cardstock for the pages inside. And again, if I were to do it over again, I would use a like a heavier weight, maybe printing paper. So something like a 24 pounds so that it wouldn't be totally see-through. But my, the DIY version, I was able to make it very functional, very similar based off of the black line masters that they have online and then finding the pictures. But again, finding the pictures took a long time, getting these into a format that would be printer friendly, took a long time as well because I didn't want to print a million copies because Blackland Masters are set up to print multiple copies in a classroom environment. And that's not what I was interested in. I wanted to save paper. And so it took a while to get it into that format and it took a while to get find the pictures. So again, it kind of depends on what your budget is, what you want to do. And I'm really happy that I started off with these and I know that my child really likes them. So that then we were able to move over to the purchased version and I feel very good about that. If I were to do it again, I would probably actually do it the same way I did it. I would make a trial version and then purchase something. I like the idea of the continent readers. They're just Part of me wonders if it would be too much for my kid to have that many to work through. Like if it would feel like too big of a work to get through all of the reds if we also had the continents out, for example. Because again, we're in a homeschool environment, so there's not 10 different kids working on this at the same time, or three, or whatever. It's I have basically one child at a time working on these. Um, she did, did say that she really likes these readers and that she does wish she had more. So we may end up purchasing a continent version later, but I would probably just start one continent at a time and build out my collection as opposed to trying to purchase everything at once. And that's one thing that I found to be kind of a good principle with a lot of Montessori things. I found going into our first year of elementary now, that a lot of the materials overlap from primary. So I had a couple of big ticket items to purchase this year, but it left room in the budget to kind of build out some more of these things. So again, that is my parts of the biomes readers. And the last language material I wanted to talk about from Washika is their language works. And that is a spelling program that they have. Their version are paper strips with squares cut out in the middle of these words. The idea is that the kids go through and they write the targeted phonogram and they write that in the squares. And so for me, I did this DIY version and it was pretty simple. This one's actually more quick to do than the other ones. Um, so I did this DIY version and left room for my kid to write it using a dry erase paper or dry erase pocket rather and then after they write down the letters what they can then do is like if they were using a notebook they would just plain write in the notebook but they have a picture for each of the words and they can then go look at the picture and then write out the rest of the word to practice spelling and again they're able to check it later as well so this was my diy version of the language works i think it's probably targeted more towards an elementary age child, just because it is focused on spelling. But it's something that we've enjoyed. It's been easy enough for me to DIY. And especially because of something like this, I don't find the pictures to be as critical because they've already seen the word 
in text first and they're able to look at that and have an idea of what they're looking for. So a picture of a fin, you know, it can be almost any picture of a fin. It doesn't have to be perfect. So that's kind of what I found for this and why this one's easier to DIY than some of the other ones. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, um, again, these are just materials that we own that I've made some, I've purchased some, and that is it.